In this video, I'm going to try to explain to you guys how to use the min and max functions. We're going to cover things like how to use them with a few basic examples. Then we're going to go through some of the different variations like min a or min x that really extends your measures beyond the basic. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what min and max functions are so I'll spare you the basic explanations on them. So instead, let's jump into this demo that I prepared so we can go through a couple of examples together. I created a sample sales dataset here with some other fields like the item names, price and purchase date and I purposely included a variety of data types. You'll see in a minute why I've done that. I've created a DAX table here that basically stores all my measures and a simple date table that relates to the purchase date. Setting up this date table is super simple and is a good best practice to have, especially as your data set gets bigger. If you want to know more about why it's important to set up your own date tables and how to do it, I made a video about it actually in the past. So if you want to know more, go check out that video. Anyway, let's start by writing some DAX. So create new measure. Let's name this one max sales. Let's pretend we want to get the maximum sales we've got. As soon as you type max, you'll see that it asks for a column or two scalar values. We'll add a column for now and we'll come back to that scalar value later. So sales amount, close that function and hit enter. Now if we create a card in our report and drag our max sales in it, you'll see that it gives us 465.6 which is supposed to be the highest sales amount we have in our table. We can check if that's true by just sorting our table over here. You'll see that that number matches up with this one. Obviously now if you replace our max with the min function instead, it will do the exact opposite. It will get the lowest sales amount in our table. Now because this is a measure, it can understand context. Let me show you what I mean with that. Let's create a new table. This time let's add just the item names. Then let's grab our max sales. Now what happens is that our measure recalculates the maximum sales amount for each row. In this case, it gets the max sales for each item. If we click one of the items in this table, it will filter our main table over here. You'll see that the max number we have in our items table is the same as the highest sales we have on our sales table. If you're wondering, our card visual is showing a different number because its context is all the items in the sales table. So that about covers the basics of how you would normally use the min and max functions. Now let's dig deeper into some of the other ways that you can use these functions. Let's say you wanted to get the max sales, but you need to see for only the female customers and you need to explicitly write it in your measure. This means that you can't use context or the filters pane. So what do you do? Now this is where our iterators max x or min x comes to the rescue. Iterator functions evaluates on every row. It basically just lets you add some expressions or filters to your results instead of just specifying a column. Let's create a new measure here. Let's name it max sales female equals. Then we'll type max x. This time it asks you for a table and an expression. The table you specify here is what the sum x will evaluate. So if we put the sales table here, it will just evaluate all the rows in that table. And we don't want that. Remember, we're just interested in the female rows. So let's replace this instead with a filter function. Specify the table again, sales, comma, and this time let's put our filter. Customer gender is equals to female. Let's close this filter function, then add a comma, as our expression here, we can put max sales here, close the measure and hit enter. Now if we drag this column to our items table over here, you'll see that its values are slightly different from the normal max sales measure. Let's see what's going on here. Let's click on one of the items. You'll now see that it gets the max sales amount for each item that were by a female customer. 
And that's one of the ways that you can use iterative functions in DAX. Now let's take a step back and look at another way that you can use the standard max function. Remember at the beginning it gave us an option to put scalar values instead of a column? Well it turns out you can use the min and max functions to compare two different expressions together. Let's start by creating a new measure. Let's name it compare max this time. Equals, then let's type max. Now instead of adding a column here, let's add our measure, max sales, then comma, then add max sales female. Let's close this up and hit enter. Then let's drag it to our items table. Basically it compares the two expressions and returns the highest value. Obviously this isn't the best example since it always returns the max sales. So let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's copy the max sales female and create a new measure. Let's create for a male version this time. Then in our compare max measure, let's compare male and female max sales. Now you can clearly see what the max function does here. It compares the male against female sales amount then returns the value that is the highest. To be honest, I didn't even know that you could use min and max functions this way. I actually had to look at the documentation itself uh, to see exactly how you would use these. So maybe you won't even need to use it at any point, but it's good to know that it's there. And speaking of things that I don't really use, let's move on to the next functions, min a and max a functions. So again, with these functions, I didn't really use them that much. Uh, I had to actually, again, look at the documentation to see what they're used for. So what I found was actually a little bit interesting. It seems like they work pretty much the same as the standard functions, except that they work slightly differently when it comes to different data types. So with the basic functions, we know that we can use them on some common data types like dates, integers, and texts. However, you'll notice that when you try to get a min or max of a binary column, like a true or false column, your measure will error out instead. Now if we replace the max function with a max a function, you'll see that it returns one instead of erroring out. One is true and zero is false. That's the only use case I've seen so far of when you'll get a chance to use this function. But I'm sure there are more ways that people are using this. If you know, let me know in the comment section below. And that covers pretty much everything that you need to know about these min and max functions. So just to recap, you use the min and max functions by specifying the fields that you want. If you want to compare two scalar values or expressions, you can also do that. If you want to add some expressions or filters to your calculations, you can use the iterator functions min x and max x. And lastly, you want to use the min a and max a functions. If you want to calculate binary fields like true or false fields without erroring out your measure. I hope that helped you guys. Give Give this video a like if it did. It's the best way to let me know that you enjoy this type of content. Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys again on the next one.